So let's take this break down. Okay, just got here from Texas. Uh, we're gonna start hunting. I guess we can hunt this evening. Uh, season's been open a while. We're here uh, 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 warming the gun and me up. Uh, see how we do. We're gonna shoot here at 530 yards and then we might try something a little further away. And if that works out, then we're gonna start looking for deer. Okay, so we're, we're checking his zero. We're gonna reset the turret this elevation. He's been shooting this gun in Texas and uh, here at 7,200 feet, it's a little bit different. Any more center than that, Okay, good. So uh, Terry's been here the last three years, probably. Shot some great deer uh, over the last few years and made some great shots. Uh, kind of been fortunate to find the kind of deer we found. We're here this year looking for another one, bigger, better, farther. Uh, so we'll see how this week goes. Been seeing a deer up here that's about 30 inches wide and he's got a big kicker on him, big typical high 90s deer which you're like to get a look at. It's kind of windy tonight. We're gonna be lucky to see him. We're sure he's be down in the down in a hole somewhere out of the wind, I'm sure. We can go see if we can find him. hunted a couple years ago, that big friend typical. He's playing the same game. He's back and forth, back and forth in this saddle. If those other deer were bedded 20 minutes before dark, I would expect him to be in, tucked in tight. Hope, hopefully we'll get to see him.
we seen a few deer, but nothing to get excited about. Nothing, uh, you know, some young deer and some small, small deer. So, you know, it's a start. We'll just build on that. Okay, now we're ready to clean the carbon out of our bore. Now, if you saw previously, we, when we cleaned the copper out of the bore, it still had a dingy dark look to it. It wasn't bright and shiny. Uh, the reason is, is that there's still carbon deposits left in that bore. And so that's what we're going to clean out now. Now, the carbon cleaner is very similar to the copper. We're going to start with our nylon brush. We'll run it through the bore. And then we're going to apply the KG-1 to the nylon brush. And then we're going to do the exact same process as the copper. We're going to give it 40 to 60 strokes. And then we're going to patch it out with a couple dry patches. And then we're going to check and look and see how shiny that bore has become. And after a couple applications, it should be just as shiny as stainless steel. While we're cleaning this bore with carbon, um, I want to talk about a couple things. Um, a lot of people have probably heard about a carbon ring or a carbon deposit that builds up in the throat area of your rifle. Um, this is very prevalent on some of the higher pressure calibers. Um, essentially what happens is, is that's where your, your bullet engages the rifling and where the, the most of the pressure that uh, your chamber builds and the heat is built right in that throat area. And essentially that's where the baked on carbon ends up. So what you'll notice is, is you might not have carbon throughout the bore, but you could have some in that throat area. So by using this nylon brush, I can get right into that throat area and I can scrub it twice as good as everything else because that's where your major carbon deposits are going to start. So I'm just going to get in here and I'm just going to work that throat area over really good. I don't want to build a carbon ring because carbon ring is the fastest way to increase your pressure or velocity when you're shooting. Okay, now I've, I've got about 60 strokes down the bore and what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a couple dry patches on there. We're going to run them through and then we're going to check the end of our muzzle and, and see if we've got a nice shiny finish or if it's still kind of dull. If it's still dull, we're going to reapply the KG-1 and get some more of that carbon out of there. Let's check out that bore. All right, we've looked in the end of the bore. It's still not as shiny as I'd like it. There's still some carbon deposits in there. So I'm going to re reapply some KG-1 and work it just a little bit more. Probably one more set of 40 to 60 strokes in there and that'll probably do us. We'll check it out after that, but I'm going to reapply this KG-1. And we'll get back in there and work that carbon out of this bore so it's completely clean. All right, I've got another 50 strokes through there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a couple clean patches. And I'm going to work these back and forth a little bit. Really get that carbon fouling out of there. Make sure I got it all. All right, there's a couple dry patches. Let's get a good look at the muzzle and see what it looks like. If it's bright and shiny, we're ready to move on to the next step. Okay, we've checked the end of the muzzle. It's bright and shiny. I really like the look of it. I would think we've got all the carbon out of it. So the final step uh, into maintaining this bore condition is we're going to take a patch and the KG-4 gun oil. And what we're going to do is we're going to put a couple drops on the patch and then we're going to run this down the bore and what we're going to do is we're going to saturate the inside of that bore a little bit with this oil and make sure you get a good coating front to back the whole bore work it in there really good and then what we'll do is we don't want to leave all that oil in there 
So what we're going to do is, is now that it's had a chance to get into all the little cracks and crevices, I like to let it sit for a couple minutes. We'll just take a dry patch and we'll get a dry patch in there and we'll take any of the excess oil off the inside of that bore. Just like that. And now essentially your bore is clean and ready to be taken back out into the field and shot. Patience is a bitter pill only the strong can swallow. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing we can do here. You know, sun's in our eyes. There's, uh, Travis and I were just talking. There's, you know, there's no way he can, you know, get us, get us around this way. There's, uh, you know, too much in the way. Too much livestock. There's does. Wind's wrong. So, come back in the evening. Quakey line. Hmm? Big butt quakey line. Okay. 20 yards in. Found a pretty good buck. Big typical frame. He's got a couple kickers on both sides. He's in the big deer category too. He's gonna take a look at it. We're arguing over whether we're going to shoot this deer or not, and I'm afraid that he's going to win. But we're going to let a six by eight or twenty or some damn thing walk away. <laughs> I cannot believe these guys let deer go like that. That's like a, that's like a six by seven. Garrett's asking himself. How does Travis find these guys that don't shoot deer like that? I mean, he must look all over the world to find a guy that doesn't shoot deer like that. I don't think he's thinking that. <laughs> oh, he's thinking that. He's thinking that. I don't think he's thinking that. I'm thinking that. 
<laughs> now you really know. That's what you want. We're gonna get up after and try to get up on the mountain before it gets uh, before it gets daylight and uh, set up a, an ambush. Maybe we can uh, at least get a good look at this this deer we've been trying to get a look at. So, uh, sounds like a good deer. Trav, give me the range. Six thirty. Six thirty corrected, Terry. Six thirty corrected. Nice shot. Hold one minute left. He's coming our way. He's facing us. Okay, he's see the see the quakies, the dead quakies. Yeah, I see where he went down. I think. That was a great shot. That really was. What a deal. He's down. I got a little intense for a few minutes there. <laughs> well, you know what? You got to stay calm. You know, Terry keeps coming back and harassing us here. And he's fun because he'll hunt these big deer with us and he'll go the miles with us. So we've uh, we put on a few empty days and, and today was the, the hard work come, uh, come all together for us today. <laughs> Well, should we go see what we should we go see what we got into today, Brett? <laughs> I think we did good. Oh, I think we did great. <laughs> I 
that to me over here. Not Good job, awesome. Travis. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad we let that giant go yesterday. That's all I can say. Yeah. You know what? Man, he's neat. That's the one. That's the one we've been looking for for a few years, huh? I think so. Yeah. That's just cool. If you'd like to hunt with Western Lands too, check out www.westernlandshunting.com. Hunting apparel for long-range pursuit provided by Sitka and Kennetrek Boots of Montana. License applications made through Cabela's Tags. Brought to you by Gunworks, G7 Optics, Night Force, Hornady, Flatline Ops, and Caldwell Shooting Supplies. <laughs> we'll get the camera guy to call the way. Ooh. Oh, that's right. There is no camera guy. Because good camera guy, they just disappear, right? That's right. That's what I thought. Okay. Do we have a camera guy?